You just can't make this stuff up. that no one misleads you. The Bible is clear that the last days will be filled with false teachers, deception, mockers, lawlessness, those who love themselves, those who will be unloving and unholy, those without self-control, those who will pretend to know God, yet they are simply whitewashed tombs. There will be no great end times revival, just a great last days deception. Scripture warns that people will creep into their churches unaware. Who are those creeping in and why are they doing it? The church in the last days will be full of compromise, deception, and a lack of discernment. Life Clips will contend earnestly for the faith, as Jude 3 instructs. Warning, the red light has been turned on. Grab your Bible, it's time to expose the dark. Unfortunately, Global Vision Bible Church needs to just be called demonic tent with a blue flame something or other, I don't know. This is not a church and well it's just getting worse and worse and more loony as the time goes on with them and i'm gonna cover some stuff because they didn't encounter any glory they just encountered the demonic and day one was relatively calm by the time you get to day five or i should say session five the demons are in full swing let's take a look thank you so much for journeying with me on this four part series this is the final one uh i will put on session four and then part of session five of what you've already seen but i'll continue well you'll see just hang tight but anyway, this is bringing it in for a landing, and we can see that Ty brought up some really strange women, uh, women I have never heard of before. I mean, I heard of Jenny Weaver. Um, this particular woman that we're going to see in session four, we just, the reason I wanted to do it like this is we can just see the progression of evil and the spirit that was in this place, which was not of God, progressively get worse. So here we were, session four, this false spirit was just really just honing into people. Um, I wouldn't be shocked if a lot of people came out of this with possession, possession. Absolutely. Uh, but we're going to dive in and we're going to end this week here. Um, and I don't know who this nutcase is at all. I've never heard this woman. I've never seen this woman. I'm just scared of this woman. Um, all she does is these witches chants and incantations, I guess. I don't know. And every time they breathe, it reminds me of Heidi Baker. <sighs> when they're breathing, what are you breathing for? Like, are you, did you just run a marathon? Why are you breathing? Um, anyway, let's go ahead and finish this out. We'll finish it strong. So again, thank you so much for allowing me to break this up. And I hope you journeyed with me through all four parts. And that's why last week I really wanted just to stay on that pretty eight minute section so you guys can see progressively how this demonic influence began to grow. So here we go. Part four of four, bringing it in for a landing. I want us to begin to speak in our heavenly language. Rinda haru monda daika, bunda da sede bundai, na 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 yo sundo shaka, liando sede be kea rata tayaka, ruma na sedeyaha, rimanda ya sunda daika, ramanda ya shida de yamaha, upa da terebaka, na na ya saramaka, shonda ho, for the Lord will say, I'm about to unravel you to the core. I'm about to unravel you to the core. I'm about to heal you from the inside out. Every leg.
layer, every layer. God says, I'm getting into the layers of your life. And I'm going to heal you from the inside out. For the healer is here in this house. I wanted to start it off with a bang. So there you go. Um, I never knew when you speak in tongues, you interpret yourself. And really when they speak in tongues and then they interpret, it's never what they say in tongues. Like the same word is not used when they say. It's also weird. But let's continue. Shall we? I don't know about you, but my favorite position is this just leave me right here because in that the blueprint of my life was made manifest to me my identity was made manifest to me not in a room full of people but when I began to inquire of the Lord I begin to wait. Father, who are you? I was raised as a preacher's kid. Saw him here, there, and everywhere. But until I sought the Lord, and he began to unveil who he was to me, then I found out who I was. And then my whole life, changed will you do with the encounter you've received this weekend for god brought me from south louisiana to ask you this question i said god what do you want me to give he says ask them what will you do with the encounter you've received this weekend for your, your mind was created to perceive the mysteries of heaven your mind was created to perceive the mysteries of heaven your mind was created to perceive the mysteries of heaven I speak right now glory encounters that even as you begin to make that place at your house some of you you have that place but it's a little still the old pattern of how you sought God it's time to change it up how do I do that I sought the Lord he answered me so get home and begin to seek the Lord Show me how to prepare a place for you. Because my place is going to look different than yours. Because you know what? I'm different than you. And you're different than me. So I put that arrow on the girl. That's their backup or lead singer. And she also did a message, which I didn't put on there. The girl right there in blue. However, her just leaning over like that, again, that's just not natural. It's very, very strange. And now we're going to go into our most beloved session five of which you guys saw in a pop-up RLE and Ty and her fascination, as you can see, with olive oil. And the Lord told me, he said, oh God, help me. He said, if you will sit right here, in my presence when nobody's looking when there's no microphone when there's no platform when there's no worship music when there's nobody around if you'll just sit right here daughter i'm going to pour oil from the throne room of heaven all over you because i just want you to sit in my presence i want you to be in my presence it's not enough to just go to church it's not enough just to worship it's not enough it's not enough it's not enough and then god said you know what's gonna happen you're gonna be dripping so much oil that you're gonna walk through those people and you're gonna say this is the overflow for comic relief i uh or for cooking purposes you could just see what she used i wanted to show this again but i also wanted to lead into after she cleaned up um and greg went on stage and was like you need to clean up you're ruining my church i'm just teasing i don't know what he said but he didn't seem happy i don't know uh any who abu we're gonna go ahead and see how this just began to evolve into some more shenanigans and tie I, i'm just gonna have to play this guys because you're gonna learn something about joseph here today you're absolutely gonna learn something about joseph i i never knew this so anyway here we go last session demonic influences are everywhere I will wait on
I've mentioned this before when I did the Greg Locke series, the four part, but um, I remember what I told you guys when I first met Ty, that right there is what she looked like when uh, she, we were in Kentucky and she was, we were at one church. She was just so demonic to me back then. Very strange, very weird. So I'm not shocked that we're seeing this happening. Now what's going to happen is after this worship thing goes on for a little bit, she's also going to do her incantations over people and start chanting. So again, this is not speaking in tongues. This is speaking a demonic language over these people. I want to make that very, very clear. Okay, so she just butchers so much in the Bible. She sounds smart, but she's really dumb. So she not only, like I said, she butchers the story of Joseph, which I'm just going to let it play because it's fascinating. You you might learn something. She butchers the analogy of new and old wineskins. It's just terrible. And here, while this is muted, she just talks about the oil and where to get it from. And she has a mandate and it's just complete shenanigan craziness. And uh, anyway, after she's done putting her chants on the audience members, the uh, goats lapping it up, she just continues to get crazy. So here we go. Hey, hey, you know what? For the first time, he didn't call me daughter. You know what he called me? He said, hey, broad. I said, whoa. Coat from his daddy. 
And it was the mantle that was placed upon Joseph's life. But, you know, his brothers got all bent out of shape. They were jealous. You know, had that spirit of jealousy about them. And so, you know what they did. They took Joseph. He was out there. They put him in the pit. Let him get sold off. And there Joseph was in the pit. And his brothers tried to take his mantle back to his dad. Did y'all catch what I just said? Somebody tried to take your mantle and take it back to your father. So guess where it's at? It's with the father. Okay, you're with me. Amen. So Joseph finds himself in the pit. And then he finds himself in the palace. And then he gets thrown in the prison. That doesn't look like a fun mantle, does it? That sounds a little bit like down the stairs a little bit, you know? From the pit to the palace to the prison. But then you know what happened? All of a sudden, this cupbearer, he has this memory that Joseph interpreted this dream. Amen. And so... The king, he brings Joseph out. And Joseph begins to interpret this dream that nobody else could interpret. Because it was the mantle that only Joseph had. You see, just because his brothers took his mantle away doesn't mean God changed his mind. Just because somebody talked you out of what God talked you into doesn't mean that God changed his mind. It is so difficult for me not to comment, but oh my gosh, is she butchering the story of Joseph. So Joseph, he interprets the dream of the king. You know what the king did? He put a robe on him. He put a robe on him. And Joseph's mantle took him from the pit to the palace, to the prison, to the palace, to the land of Goshen. Hey, he went all the way to the land of Goshen. Hey, who's trying to go to Goshen? I'm trying to go to Goshen because the lights never go out in Goshen. I find it fascinating that these charismaniacs, let's call them what they are, just twist Bible. They're going to the land of Goshen and now she's going to do a mic drop as if she did something good. She made zero sense. I don't know what you mean, Ty. Please don't drop the mic because you didn't say anything important. You got all excited about the land of Goshen. I, I'm i so confused, but they give her a standing O. So, oh, please help me, please. Anyway, that concludes this week's RLE and our wonderful four part series. If you happen just to tune in this week, well, go rewind. There's three more gems behind this one. Until I see you here, there, or in the air, not in the land of Goshen, Lord willing, I'll see you all next week.